नमस्कार थैंक यू प्रेरणा कॉलेज ऑफ कॉमर्स नागपुर फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू डिलीवर द की नोट एड्रेस इन द नेशनल सेमिनार ऑन द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इट्स अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट एंड आई मस्ट कंग्रेचुलेट यू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स for conducting this very important program and i'm sure that coming two days the presentations the discussions the discourse that you are going to have is going to create a pool of specialized scholars on the nep and i'm sure that with this seminar with this webinar you all are going to send something very important to the policy planners and you are going to influence the education system in the country through this very important webinar i must congratulate dr pravin joshi and the entire faculty and staff and all the participants of this seminar and once again thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you through this keynote address you know uh, the nep document it doesn't say no to technology it's very inclusive it's very flexible it just adds on something that you have already been doing that i have already been doing through the nep document we have an opportunity only to add more to that isn't it the nep 2020 it re is released by the education ministry and it accentuated on the mounting need of online education in india and during the pandemic this global crisis it has become important that we should be ready with some alternative means of education and this is where the online education system has come as handy isn't it in a country like india with a vast population and multiple languages cultures and implementation of the nep it has become a huge responsibility on educationists like you and me and for that matter you know there are many a slip between the cup and the lip isn't it and uh, you know the challenges in a country like india where more than 30% of the population is not computer savvy and a place where not everyone can afford a computer or a laptop even many teachers are not familiar with the new format of education it's actually a big challenge to implement the policies through the nep many teachers are not trained for online education and uh, not necessarily all good classroom teachers can be good teachers on the online mode online examination system is a big challenge you all experience that even i do experience that in my two decades of experience of teaching in higher education in different universities and now teaching in indira gandhi national open university the world's largest university in terms of students intake even i understand the challenges but still i must say with a very positive note that this alternative mode of education is an answer to the global challenge during the pandemic and even after that and uh, you know uh, the internet connectivity may not be effective everywhere and then you have a question how am i going to teach and uh, good concentration and self motivation these things are also equally required needed when you are teaching online and uh, the role of distance and digital education and online learning these things are very very seminal in the nep if you go through the document carefully the 67 pages document you will find that word language more than 200 times so the nep it gives emphasis to the traditional knowledge systems to the indian knowledge systems and to languages and the preservation of the dying cultures the endangered languages through communication and information technology so this is where you know there is a kind of blended learning the nep wants us to combine to go truly interdisciplinary to go truly multidisciplinary and create a new discipline by a combination by a culmination of more than one disciplines isn't it 
the former president of India, uh, Honorable uh, Ram Ramnath Kovindji, he acknowledged that the new education policy will transform India into a knowledge superpower. And today we actually see that India is a true knowledge superpower. There was a time when we, we used to say knowledge is power. But today, the utilization of knowledge is power. So as educationists, it's the responsibility of us, of you and me, to implement the knowledge that is provided at our doorstep through the internet. He stated that becoming a knowledge superpower will help India uh, and the immense talent of the students of the country. So now the NEP is more learner oriented, student oriented, train the trainers, isn't it? And uh, uh, as an implementation of that and as an implication of that, the uh, new education policy it has met numerous welcome endorsements. Uh, for example, its emphasis is on open and distance learning and technology based learning, sitting at home. The students, the learners can learn at their own pace and you are on the other side of the screen and providing support to the students. It's two-way method, it's not just one-way method. Another important point of concern in the NEP is, as of now, online degrees do not carry much weightage in India when it comes to employments placements and uh, there are many other misapprehensions of students that need to be dismissed in this framework and we have to play a very important role in convincing our students, our learners that online and distance education and education through ICT that is equally important like the conventional education system. Research has discovered that uh, the general perception of online learning encompasses either a video imitation of a normal classroom lecture with PowerPoint presentations and all that. So as teachers, you must ask yourself, is your PowerPoint presentation just a substitute to your face-to-face -face teaching? If it is yes, then please don't go for that. But if your PowerPoint presentation is two-way, there is scope for the learners to interact with you, then please prepare your online classrooms accordingly. Design and development and training the trainers. These two things are very, very important and creating a new pedagogy behind online learning is very, very important. There are quite a few things that I would like you to emphasize. For example, if you have YouTube-based teaching, in your classroom, online classroom, then make your comments and explanations at the right places. Give scope to your students, to the learners to give their feedback to you immediately. And uh, put your emphasis on the tangible and the intangible cultural heritages. Give importance to multiculturalism and uh, uh, a two-way learning process rather than muting the students. You know, when I am taking an online class, I make it a point that my students put their videos on. Even if they can put their audios off, unless they need to talk to me, but I emphasize that they should keep their videos on so that I can have an eye-to-eye -eye contact with my students. So probably that is how you can see your learners, which I say that a two-way audio interface. It's so very important and uh, make your classrooms very creative and engaging in very, very innovative ways and give very simple and short assignments. Don't give very lengthy assignments and uh, put your emphasis, put a lot of importance on brain based learning, not just learning by mugging up, by remembering, rather simple and short assignments and brain based learning and uh, put your focus on the new trends of science and technology. Being a teacher of English literature, I do not shy away from technology. I can create a blog. I can create a website of my own. Similarly, teachers of science and technology, they must learn languages. So this is where there is the interface between science and technology and then humanities and social sciences. This is what NEP emphasizes. Technology-based solution to students' problems. Language classrooms language laboratories are very very important and emphasis is given on the availability of contents in different languages 
mother tongue, local languages, state languages, national languages, even family languages. You know, so NEP emphasizes on all kinds of languages. 17% uh, English medium schools in India, 64% Hindi medium schools and 83% Hindi plus vernacular medium schools in India. They have given feedback through a pilot study to create this kind of a document. NEP doesn't impose anything on you. I, like I said in the beginning itself, it only gives you more options. It facilitates you. You know, Article 343 of the Constitution says Hindi is our official language. But the clause 2 says that anyway, English will continue to be the official language along with Hindi. So, language is not important. Rather, the medium of instruction, communicating, reaching out to the learners is much more important than any particular language. This is what NEP document says, right? Uh, uh, then uh, coming to uh, the ABC in NEP, there is something like ABC, which I'm going to explain. A says that 10 Hindi speaking states may make all correspondence in Hindi while making the content available in all the constitutionally approved languages. B, it says Punjab, Maharashtra and Gujarat will correspond in Hindi while making the content available in local as well as English. And C, it says East, Northeast and South India may correspond in English while making the content available in Hindi and local languages. NEP document has used the word language more than 200 times, like I said. Translation, transcreation, availability of content on science, technology, law, social sciences, humanities. Everything is so very important for the NEP. And the primary education may be less problem solving and more informative. That is what NEP says. Professional and higher education may be more employment oriented. And adaptability to artificial intelligence and data handling and protection, these things are given a lot of importance and providing effective safeguards for data protection. During an age of availability of everything on the internet, data protection is very, very important and NEP also gives importance to it. And its focus is on greater digitization and greater democratization of education and interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research have been promoted and there is no margi deshi dichotomy in Indian traditional knowledge system. NEP also somehow tries to dissolve, try to you know dismiss that kind of dichotomy between the margi and deshi and uh, working in, in, in IGNO, the world's largest university that I already told you in the beginning, I have been critically engaged with the right pedagogy for online and distance education and that is where I contribute to the NEP in my small little way. We have pilot studies for digital and online education. We have training the trainer programs. We have availability of our courses in different languages. Like last year when I designed the MA in Folklore and Culture Studies for my university, at the same time, I contributed massively to the UGC net examination on folk literature. So this is how, you know, you have to create employability when you design a syllabus, when you design a course, you should ensure that your students are getting into that kind of a program and also to employment. We are talking about Atmanirbhar Bharat, independent India students who are self-reliant. So this is where your role is very, very important. Create digital storehouses, give importance to content creation and give importance to community service. This is where the noble profession that you are into, teaching, will be very fulfilling for you. Talk about blended modes of learning. That is what NEP emphasizes. With this, I would stop here by Wishing you all the very best coming two days. Have a fruitful discourse, have a lot of discussions and come out with some very inclusive and very conclusive research on the NEP and contribute to higher education in India and in the world. Wish you all the very best. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to deliver the keynote address.
विश ऑल द बेस्ट नमस्कार